Good morning and welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church where the flames of God's love never ever are extinguished. For our friends joining us via the drive-in, if you could give me a couple car honks, let me know you can hear me okay. Awesome. And for those of you joining us via Facebook or our call-in, welcome to you as well. We are glad you could join us. Uh, we have a couple quick announcements before we get to um, the worship part of our time together. Uh, our uh, board meeting this Thursday night, uh, we will be meeting here at church uh, instead of Zoom. So uh, please make sure that you uh, are wearing your mask um, and join us in our fellowship hall uh, for that meeting at 7 o'clock. Do we have other announcements over there? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we all joined together uh, raising Sue Adamski in our prayers. Uh, just, just sad that she's had a stroke, and we want to make sure that she knows we're all thinking of her and praying for her, and also for Tony. Um, and just a couple other things. Oh, this is Barb. I'm back from Florida, so watch out because I've lost an hour's sleep. We came in last night, and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, she thinks she's still on It's a Small World. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Haunted Mansion. Um, <laughs> uh, Fonda, Gina, Belinda, if you're around, could we just meet briefly after church to talk about the food pantry because we're going to be delivering the food over to Brick this week. And Easter's coming, and by golly gee, we didn't have the Easter eggs last year. We've got them this year for the kids, so keep that in mind for Easter Sunday. That's all. Got it. Okay. Oh, now it's me, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> okay, call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Who is good. good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Thanks be to God. God. And our opening hymn is We Fall Down. And would you join me as we read our opening prayer together? Almighty God, God through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you bring salvation to the world. Give us strength to believe in him that we may share in his victory over the power of death and fulfill the purpose for which you have made us. For he dwells with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And our next hymn will be Amazing Grace.
If you would join aloud with me in our prayer of illumination. Almighty God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, open your word and illumine our darkened world that we may see clearly and live faithfully by the light of your truth in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and leave, live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. People of God, let us offer our sacrifice of thanksgiving, telling of God's deeds with songs of joy.
if you would join together with me in our doxology. Merciful God, we thank you for your wonderful works among humankind. Accept these offerings with the dedication of our lives and help us to be for the world an emblem of your steadfast love in Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would now join me in singing the first verse of hymn number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer, as our call to prayer. would join me now in an attitude of prayer. Holy God, we come before you this beautiful day in your creation, thankful for all the blessings you bestow upon us in our lives. We are thankful for sunlight, for clean air, for the sounds of nature. Lord, you taught us to bring everything to you in prayer, so we also lift to you not only our joys, but also the things that weigh heavily on our hearts and minds. We lift up all of those who are suffering this day, whether physically, emotionally, or mentally, fighting illness or injury, battling depression, whatever they may be working through, God, we lift them to you into your healing hands. We ask that you would continue to guide the hands and the efforts of all of the doctors and nurses and surgeons and lab technicians and research scientists and psychologists and psychiatrists and so many more who are working so hard to help heal us. God, we also give thanks for those who work so hard to keep us safe in this world, and we lift them up to you for your protection we give thanks and lift up all of our servicemen and women serving in the military, our police and firefighters, our first responders, and so many others. God, we ask that you would live in their hearts and in their minds, guide them in their words and actions, keep them safe and strong. And Lord, for those who are far away from home, we pray that they may be able to return home soon and that we could see an end to conflict in our world. We also lift to you this day our nation and every nation in this world. As we continue to move through this time of global pandemic, we see signs of hope as vaccinations continue to go out, as people are recovering. But we also recognize the many who have lost their lives we recognize the families that are hurting and in mourning. God, we also recognize the political unrest, both in our country and in so many around this world. We recognize the signs and systems of injustice that continue to hold people back and hold them down. And we pray that you would 
open our hearts and our minds that we might be able to better see those things, that we might be able to come together to work for the betterment of all humanity, not just a select few. Let us see the truth, the truth of what you see, that we are all your beloved children, equal and worthy of being, of love and mercy and grace. All of these things we have mentioned and what lives in our hearts, we lift to you this morning in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world. For people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Let us uncover our sin before the liberating light of Christ. If you'd please join them together with me aloud in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess the folly of our own sin and the hypocrisy of our complaints. We grumble about the evils in our world, even as we commit injustices and profit through deceit. We fret about the scarcity of resources while hoarding earth's goods and cheating the poor. We protest the problems of our world, but we do not actively work to address them. Merciful God, expose our sins before the light of your grace. Heal our sin and free us from our foolish ways that we might know the joy of eternal life in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please take a few moments now for silent prayer and confession. Beloved children of God, indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn it, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our affirmation of faith this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapters 15, verses 1 through 6, and Colossians 1 Chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ, Christ died, died for our, our sins, sins was, was buried, was raised, raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross, reconciles all things to God. Amen. Our next scripture re reading comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. From death to life. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived 
following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now let us join in singing what wondrous love is this. Our third scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do Evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that they may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you would join me again in an attitude of prayer. God of all creation, you call us into a community of faith. You call us into this community to love each other, to help each other, to support each other, and to grow together in our faith and knowledge of you. Your spirit moves throughout the world to expand this community and inspire us in our hearts to love both you and our neighbors. And your son pay the ultimate price so that the community might continue on, not held back by sin and death, and instead grounded in your mercy, love, and grace. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. This week, we are going to continue in our Lenten sermon series, Good News in Challenging Times, where we're looking at the good news that we find in Scripture, both the literal good news, as well as other information that we might qualify as news that is good or positive. We are also looking for the good news we find out in the world, things that can help us feel some hope and joy during the continued pandemic challenges, the political unrest, and many other difficult realities that we find ourselves facing. Last week, we looked at the good news that we found in the book of Exodus, the Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthians, and the Gospel of John. We also looked at some of the good news that we have around us in our world. During the message, I highlighted five medical innovations that came about last year. These innovations included advances in DNA work that could help eliminate some diseases like sickle cell disease, numerous breakthroughs in heart disease and stroke research, advancements in oncology and cancer treatment, increased access to medical care through telemedicine, and a possible breakthrough in Alzheimer's research and treatment. This week, the title of our message is, But Wait! There's more good news. So let's get started with our reading from the Old Testament book of Numbers. Now, I think it's fair to admit that a lot of this section of Scripture does not really sound like such great news. The people get impatient not long after leaving Egypt, wanting a better life, and they start speaking against God and Moses. This is not good news. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is not food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. So, God sends poisonous serpents among the people, and they bite the people, and many of the people die. Again, not sounding very much like good news so far. But then the people realize that they've done something wrong by speaking against God and Moses. um, And they're probably tired of being bitten. And they ask Moses to pray to God to take these serpents away. And Moses does just that. So Moses praying for the people I think we could call good news. Or at least the beginning of good news for the people. Moses prays and God answers Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. Hey, now that sounds 
But some good news, right? We're told that Moses does what God tells him to, and it works. Yay! Good news. But I must admit that it doesn't quite feel like some of the other good news we've looked at before, especially because of what comes right before it. There is some other good news here, though, kind of underlying good news, if you will. Even in the midst of their complaining and sin, even with everything the Israelites do, God stays with them in the wilderness throughout their journey to the promised land. God could have easily at any point said, you know what, forget this ungrateful bunch. I'm done. I'm out. Good luck. And that probably would have been the end of the people right there. But God stayed true to the covenants made with Moses and the people and held them accountable to it, but never leaving them. God stayed with them in the wilderness despite time and time again when the Israelites broke the covenants, including making a golden calf and worshiping it and ignoring all that God had done for them. Now moving on to our first New Testament reading from the epistle or letter to the Ephesians. The header for this uh, section of passages is titled, From Death to Life. Now, like many other passages we have worked with up to this point, this title alone sounds like good news. We tend to think about our existence as from life to death, but this is looking at our moving from spiritual death to eternal life through Jesus Christ. Sounds like pretty good news to me. The passage starts out talking about how uh, we begin as dead through the trespasses and sins in which we once lived, Following the course of this world, all of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and sense. This is our reality before we come to faith and accept the grace of God. But the good news follows right after this. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated up with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Now that is some good news. Through Jesus we are saved and given God's grace. We are raised up and seated with Jesus in the heavenly places. And that grace is a gift from God, not something we earned on our own. And that is especially good news because that means that we are all equal in God's eyes. No one can earn more grace or a better kind of grace or extra grace. It is freely given by God as a gift to all people. One of the best things about this truth is that we don't need to be worrying about if we are enough for God's grace because God's grace is enough for us. Finally, we come to our New Testament reading from John or the gospel reading from the New Testament. Now, our reading is chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And this contains the verse that the vast majority of Christians think of when we think about the good news, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Even many non-Christians know that verse, or at least the reference to it. This is literally the good news. But I always like to include verse 17, because I think it contains some other profoundly important good news. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus was not sent to condemn the world. That is good news. Even though for centuries people have tried to use the words and stories of Jesus and really the rest of the Bible 
to condemn others incorrectly, I might add, Jesus did not come to condemn. And Jesus was sent in order that the world might be saved through him. Notice the lack here of any kind of statements like, except for the -the fill-in-the-blank group of people. Jesus came to save the world, the whole world. And that includes you. Jesus came to save you. It doesn't matter what mistakes you've made, what sins you've committed, any of that stuff. Jesus still came to save you and the rest of the world. That is good news. No matter how bad we may feel about ourselves or the things that have happened in our lives, Jesus still came to save us. All of us. I know that makes me feel better when I am struggling. That is good news for me, and I hope when you hear it, it is good news for you too. So what about our world right now? What other good news can we find out there? Things that bring us hope and maybe even some joy. Well, I found three things that I think are good news that I want to highlight and share with you today. Two of these are especially close by and I am extremely excited about. First off, there's this place I've heard about called the Stony Creek United Methodist Church. And they're helping the Lincoln Consolidated School District, PTO, host their Scholastic Book Fair using the church parking lot and outdoor space. This is good news. It is an opportunity to help our schools and support their efforts in educating and helping our children to grow. It is an opportunity to help our children learn to read. Reading is huge. This is good news. This is the church being the church in the world. This is making the physical property of the church a community space for people to come together and be a community together, especially during this pandemic when we are all pulled so far away from one another. Now, number two involves this other place I've heard about, the Clinton United Methodist Church. On March 25th, they are holding a takeout Swiss steak supper. Now, if you've never had Swiss steak, this is already good news. But that's not why I'm mentioning it. This event is good news because not only it is another way to help feed our neighbors, but also a portion of the proceeds are being given to the Clinton School District PTO as well as to the Clinton Library. Here again, the church is helping our children and others through reading and other programming. And let me tell you, libraries almost always can use help. I've worked for several libraries before going into working in God's ministry, and they rarely have enough money or resources to really do the things that they want to do to make the kind of impact in the community that they strive for. They are also one of the some of the first organizations that get their funding cut during budget crunches, despite all of what they do. Libraries not only offer access to learning and knowledge through books, but also internet access, job search assistance in many, and tons of programming for all ages. By helping support the local library, the church is, in effect, helping to support the entire community. Now, my last piece of good news is especially relevant because of today's date. Today is National Pie Day. Every year on March 14th, since 2009, when Congress declared it as a national holiday, or 314, the first three numbers of the mathematical constant value known as pi, or also known as the rate... uh, ration of a circumference of a circle to its diameter. It is also Albert Einstein's birthday, but I'm more interested in the pie part. And I say that because the way you are supposed to celebrate National Pie Day is to eat some pie. That is good news. I love pie. That's easy to tell when you look at me. I love both the mathematical pie, because I always liked math and school and Even more, I like the dessert kind of pie. 
cherry, apple, chocolate, cream, cookies and cream, ice cream pie. My list just goes on and on and on. And for those of you who are not into that kind of pie, there's also chicken pot pie if you want something savory. Now, if you're not a pie person, this may not be good news for you, but I'm giving you my blessing to celebrate National Pie Day with whatever baked goods you might prefer, or you could celebrate anything that is a circle, including pizza, which in some places is referred to a pizza pie, a bowl of soup, whatever, be creative. Today, I want to again challenge you to go and look for the good news out in the world. And I also want to challenge you to go and celebrate National Pie Day. Pi, as in the number, plays a big role in our world, not just in our mathematics classrooms, but in engineering and science and just so many other things. And it is good news as it has helped us to develop advancements in our world. And the other kind of pie is a blessing in the eyes of many, myself included. And then I want you to go and share that good news. And if you can, safely following our pandemic guidelines, try and share some pie as well. Amen. If you would join me in our closing hymn number 269, Lord, who throughout these 40 days... Church, we have received the immeasurable riches of God's grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So go forth to share this gift with others. Make the love of God, the grace of Christ, and the light of the Spirit bless you and keep you in the way of truth. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Have a blessed week.